Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to uh, uh, live NLP and coronavirus day eight. Wow, and what a fantastic session yesterday with uh, with Jess and James, um, pulling out these barriers, these uh, limiting beliefs. So thanks again. Let's give a round of applause for for Jesson um, for his fantastic session yesterday. We had some uh, brilliant feedback uh, about that session. Now. If you did what you were told, which you may or may not have done, um, you will have come into this session tonight with some limiting beliefs. And uh, what I said to you uh, that, uh, yesterday was that what we would do tonight is actually, uh, I'll take you through a process that would enable you to blow out these limiting beliefs um, <clears throat> with what I call my belief buster questions. So the first thing you'd want to do is to pull up the beliefs that you got from uh, last night or yesterday, you know, over, over the last 24 hours. Uh, my guess is you probably pulled out a few of them. And I want you just to pick one, which, like these limiting beliefs, and let's check out whether they're limiting or not, but these potentially limiting beliefs, What's the one out of all of those beliefs that if it were to disappear during this session would have the biggest impact on your life and the results you're creating at the moment? Just have a, have a look at those things. Just have a read through. Whether you're doing it live with me right now or whether you're looking at the, the replay. I'm just going to give you a minute or so just to... Uh, consider which belief you want to work on during this live video. Okay, you pick one. Uh, but if you haven't like worked out which the main one you want to do, just pick one so you can do this process. Now, I'm, I'm going to take you through the process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, put in the comments, or maybe in the top level, comments and the top level of this um, Facebook Live, uh, a link to a, a PDF. Uh, because the Belief Buster questions um, are in... And there's a CD, it's in, uh, it's in my app, uh, which you can find at davidshepherd.com. Uh, and I'm actually going to be using the app um, in, a, in a moment because there's, there's too many questions for me to be able to remember consciously. Um, so I'm going to put the, the PDF, though, from the manual of a program called Change Your Mind, Change Your Future, which is in, uh, which is in the uh, I Am David Shepherd app. Uh, so you don't need to bother taking any notes uh, because you'll be able to get the PDF um, at the end of this particular live video. So all you need to do is focus on the belief in question and the process. Now, the, the, the process comes from um, an idea from Tony Robbins where he has the, the, uh, the concept that a belief is like a tabletop. So you've got this tabletop here, and then the table's got legs. And the legs are your reference experiences um, that prove to you that this particular belief is true. Now, because of the way that our mind filters things, as soon as we make a decision, for instance, as soon as we make a decision of I'm not good enough, then our mind, our brain, goes out and searches for, in all of our experiences, for the evidence that that's true, as in, I'm not good enough. And therefore, as soon as we make the decision, we create in our experience, reference experiences, that that is true. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, no... No belief is absolutely true or not, whether it be an empowering belief or a disempowering belief. We we create them of, our, of, of we create them ourselves. We uh, we create our own experience through those particular beliefs. So what this process does is once we've decided a belief doesn't serve us, 
doesn't work for us is therefore limiting or disempowering, then it knocks the legs out from underneath the table. And by the end of the process, the table collapses and the belief will be gone. Then what we can do is to build up a new belief to put in its place. And this is like the pivot point between ground and grow. Actually, no, it's not. It's more the pivot point between um, stabilize and ground. Yeah, stabilize and ground. Uh, as in, stabilizing is taking out the limiting belief. Grounding is putting in place an alternative empowering belief. So, pick a belief. And I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the, the app on my, uh, on my iPad uh, because I, use, <laughs> I know it sounds, it might seem a little bit strange, but I use my app all the time uh, because all my manuals are in there, all the recordings are in there, all the tracks are in there, all that kind of stuff. So I, I, I use the app all the time um, for, for these kind of things. So firstly, let's identify whether this belief you have picked is a limiting belief or not, yeah? So the first question is, does this belief empower you? Does this belief enable you to be more or less? Does this belief enable you to do more or less? Does this belief enable you to have more or less? Now, if you've tr picked a truly limiting belief, then the question to that would be, no, it doesn't empower me. No, it doesn't enable me to be more. No, it doesn't enable me to be more, and it doesn't enable me to have more. Great. So the next part of this process then is to get some leverage, if you like, uh, upon your unconscious mind, which is where your beliefs actually reside, to uh, motivate your unconscious mind to want to get rid of this belief. So again, bring this limiting belief. Now we've decided it's a limiting, definitely is a limiting belief. Bring it to mind. Then ask yourself this question. What has this belief cost you in the past? What is this belief costing you right now? What will this belief cost you in the future if you don't change it? Now, for those of you who've trained with me already, you'll be going like, well, that puts me into a really away from position. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the whole thing. We, we will be going to more towards at the end of this process, okay? So right now, if you've done this process correctly, um, you're not going to be feeling that great, which is going to motivate your unconscious mind to want to change the belief now. Okay. Now, these next questions are the questions that actually take out the legs under that belief table. So bring that belief again, that old belief again to mind. How would you know right now if this belief were actually false? Or in how many ways right now do you know that this belief is false? F 
for whom is this belief not true? Like, are there people that you know of, whether they're personal friends or in your sphere of influence, your sphere of contacts, or just people that you know of in the world, are there people that this belief that you've got is not one of theirs, it's just not true for them? In fact, you could even ask yourself the question, when was this belief not true for you? There's a bit of time in your past where you believe something different from this. Maybe it was even when you were a little kid or something like that, when you had a totally different belief than the one you've got now. Beliefs are not real, they're fragile, they're that you know you can change them in an instant. So with those things in mind, the answers to those questions, in what ways do you know that this belief is actually false now? And then, in how many ways, or in what ways, or in how many ways, could the opposite of your old belief be true? In what ways, or in how many ways, could the opposite of this belief, your old belief, be true? right now. Then, what was the positive intention, the positive purpose of having that old belief in the first place. Now, you know, my guess is from doing this process that you're already at least beginning to have doubts about that old be limiting belief. And unless you're actually already at the point where you're going like, wow, how did I ever believe that in the first place? How would I ever decide it in the first place? But at the very least, the table is going to be rocky. It's going to be like shaky. The legs are starting to give way. So now let's uh, flip to a different direction. So what do you want to believe instead? What do you want to believe instead of that old belief? And make sure that when you kind of like, you know, um, it's like, what do you want to believe instead? Make sure using that, um, you know, NLP adage, don't think of a blue tree. You want to make sure that your new belief is stated in the positive. Let me give you an example. Let's say that um, somebody had this idea, this old belief that they were a bad person. You go, what do you want to believe instead? I'm not a bad person. Well, you know, when I say to you, don't think of a blue tree, what are you going to focus on? A blue tree, right? So if you've got something that was like, I'm, I'm a bad person, what do you want to believe instead? You'd want to make sure it wasn't like, I'm not a bad person, it was like, what are you instead of a bad person? If that makes sense. So that the new belief focuses on what you want. That's really important. So let me ask you the question again. So what do you want to believe instead of that old belief? Think 
Then let's put some legs under this new tabletop. Yeah? How do you know that this new belief is already true right now? Who else do you know of? And this might be people that you know personally. It might be people that you've heard of. It might be people in the world in general. But who do you know, or do you know of, that already knows that this belief is true? As in, this is one of their beliefs. This is an absolute belief for them. The thing when we work with these questions is, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? Then, let's go into your past experiences. How many ways in the past have you experienced this new belief as being true? As in, it sounds a little bit paradoxical, but how many ways in the past have you actually experienced this new belief as being true, almost as if this new belief was an old belief that you let go of in some way, shape or form for whatever reason. Then, what are all the positive consequences of you believing this new belief is true from now on. How will this new belief enable you to be who you want to be? How will this new belief enable you to do what you want to do? And how will this new belief enable you to have what you want to have? And then using what we've already been learning in our Facebook Lives so far, bring to mind the new belief. Put yourself into peripheral vision, if you're not already. Start your preferred havening touch. Think of that new belief and hard breathe whilst you're thinking or even if you want to saying that new belief out loud. Now if you totally believed it, what would the voice tonality that you'd use? There you go, let's get it really installed. Notice how that, good, that feels. Did you feel the neurological connections being made? Completely eradicating that old belief and installing the new belief. Then just remembering where your future timeline is. Just have your unconscious mind realign and reevaluate your future in alignment with your new choices. As in, what will your future be like now with that new belief? Let me go all the way out to the very end of your future timeline.
Oh, that was good. Whatever so, I can do to help. That's Siri saying, whatever I can do to help. Well, thank you, Siri. We've got this handled. <laughs> um, so there we go. That's the uh, the beat belief buster process. As I say, I'll uh, put a, uh, it'll actually be a, a picture. I took a screenshot out of the app, um, which I will put in the uh, header of the of this live and I'll put also in the comment section. Um, and, you know, I, I was um, speaking with a number of people yesterday. I spoke with my good friend, uh, Steve McDermott. Um, and Steve and I are going to be putting together uh, one of these lives uh, more around the, uh, I guess, the, the, the grow section. So I'm going to be doing a session with Steve around creativity because, you know, Steve's obviously European Motivational Speaker of the Year. You know, he's a phenomenal speaker. He's very, very funny. He's very, very educational. Uh, he's just brilliant as far as that's concerned. And what a lot of people might not know is that Steve, before he became a speaker, was a creative director for a, a major advertising company. And uh, now, like rather than using creativity for advertising, he uses creativity for putting together his presentations and speeches. But he developed an actual process to be able to enable anyone to become massively creative, which is an important thing that I think all of us need to be able to do at this particular point in time, think outside the box. I also spent a long time uh, talking to a very uh, dear friend of mine of, of 30 years, uh, Mark Lader, um, and we were talking about all manner of things. We wish we'd actually recorded the, the telephone conversation because uh, to share it with you because it was... It, it was a phenomenal conversation. Uh, it went all the way from semantics, neurosemantics, neurolinguistics, um, the the impact of our words, uh, and also though a new business model, uh, which appears to be emerging, which is a business model that will work now, and also a business model that will work in when the world presses play and we come out to the new normal. Uh, so I'm going to do a, a session, um, one of these lives with Mark for him to talk about that new business model. So, um, and how we, how, you know, we can start using that now. So uh, exciting stuff coming up um, in our future lives. Thank you for joining me again. Um, thank you for all of your feedback that you give me as far as how valuable you find in this, how useful you find in this. Uh, that helps me get through this. Um, you know, I'm in lockdown too. I'm in isolation too. And, uh, you know, that comes with its own challenges for, for everybody. No matter whether I've been in personal development for 30 years, whether I've been doing NLP for 30 years and Tomlin therapy for 27 years and Huna for 27, 26 years or whatever. Um, you know, we all find this tough. And we can get through it together by using these things that I'm, uh, I'm sharing with you. And, uh, you know, me doing this uh, is most definitely in alignment with my, my purpose and my path. Uh, and your feedback as to how you have benefited from it and uh, how it's being useful for you uh, keeps me going. So please keep that feedback going. And also, um, you know, share with as many people as possible. I'm, I'm sharing these things in a in a way. Uh, it's de-jargonized. It's not NLP, um, you know, jargon or anything like that. It's in a way which, whether people don't even know what the letters NLP mean uh, or stand for, they'll be able to get some tangible results with it. So please share them with as many people as possible, uh, because. It's only by as many people as possible shifting their mindset and, uh, and what they are doing at this point in time that all of us together are going to get through this. So, mahalo. Uh, thank you for joining me um, this evening, uh, Saturday, whether it's Saturday morning, Saturday daytime, Saturday evening, or even Sunday morning where you're, where you're actually watching this. Uh, I love you all and uh, ahui ho. Until we meet again, it should be tomorrow night.
Ahoy ho.